What's up everyone, my name is Gus and welcome to my channel. Since my start on YouTube, I've been asked several times on how to improve in Splatoon 3. Everyone has their own experiences when it comes to improving. For some, you pick it up very quickly, and for others, it may take some time, and that's completely okay. The purpose of this video is to show you very simple techniques that you can incorporate in your gameplay starting today. This video will be a two-parter, where in one video, I explain five simple techniques that will improve your mechanics and overall gameplay, and in the second video, where I invite Apple, a competitive player from the team known as Hades, to explain the thought process on improving and the time and dedication it takes to get to a high level in competitive Splatoon. So for part one of this short series, this video will focus on techniques that I found to make a difference in my gameplay as it improves your survivability and movement in Splatoon. If you found these techniques helpful or if there is something I didn't mention in this video, let me know in the comments. Someone else reading it might learn something new and actually I might learn something new as well. Also, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe since I am aiming for 5k subscribers in 2024. With that out of the way, let's start with number one. As I was editing this video, I thought it would be important to add a disclaimer before reading you a list as I can already imagine future comments on this video. I am using the term technique very loosely here. What I might list off may not seem as a technique to you, but for the purposes of receiving blessings from the YouTube algorithm goddess, five simple techniques in Splatoon 3 is just a better YouTube title. So I hope you understand the thought process of being a YouTuber and I'll let past me get back into the video. Splatoon is an extremely fast paced game, but sometimes it's okay just to take a couple of seconds to heal. We all know how it looks like to be damaged. Your screen slowly starts to get covered by the enemy ink on the sides. But what if I told you there was a way to heal yourself faster? When attacked, if you go back into your own ink, you will begin to heal from the damage. Now, why is this important? Well, for one, when you receive damage, you heal faster within your ink compared to simply standing. Just take a look at this comparison, for example. So if you ever find yourself engaging in a fight, use your ink to your advantage, not just to swim around and potentially get away, but to recover and give yourself additional HP to engage in a fight or make it more likely for you to survive if you're trying to get away. Now, this next one is a bit interesting because the only reason I'm including it in here is because of my experience playing online multiplayer. Very often, I will open my map to see a player attempting to engage a fight put themselves in a bad spot and rather than just getting out, they tunnel vision and continue to fight which ultimately results in their death. So that's why I'm naming quick super jump as the second most important technique you should know. The actions to this technique are very simple. You press X to open your map, you use either the D-pad or move your controller to the player or spawn you wish to jump to, press A and boom, you just quick super jump. My advice is get used to doing this very quickly. You should be able to press X down A within a second to get out of the fight and be back into your spawn. Another helpful tip is to know who is the backline on your team. Whether you're playing in a private battle or if you're playing online multiplayer like X rank. And if you do happen to have a backline, look at what D-pad direction they are assigned. Backline players tend to play a bit safer compared to Slayers for example. So they're a good player to jump to if you ever need to jump out of a fight. This is something that you learn very early in Splatoon, whether it's through Story Mode or VI Judd, who gives friendly tips every now and then. But sometimes if the game does not go out of its way to teach you in the initial tutorial, this action can get lost and it's never used in online multiplayer. Trust me, I am doing this for my own sake. I do not want to keep pressing this way when I crack into the enemy basket and clam blitz for none of my teammates to jump to me. So yeah, learn how to quick super jump y'all. This next one is using your turf to your advantage, stealth swimming. We all know that when swimming, we leave ripples of ink. This makes it very easy for the enemy to spot you and potentially pick you off. But by stealth swimming, you reduce the ripples while swimming, making it harder for people to see you when you're approaching or trying to get away. Slightly move the L stick 
and a player should be able to swim in the ink without being detected. The benefit is as the name suggests, you're moving stealthily to engage an opponent. So it becomes a very useful technique when you're playing something like a tri slosher. It does come with its drawbacks because you swim slower and people can still hear you because when you're in your ink, you hear a bubbly like noise and if people are sharp enough, they'll be able to spot you out. If you have the cooler effect on, this also wouldn't work as well because the cooler effect reveals your location. It's not perfect, but if executed correctly, it can catch people off guard. Some people might say just use Ninja Squid, but honestly, why waste a full main ability slot when you can use Stealth Swim all the time and still maintain your base speed when you need to have it? Now, I'm not saying that Ninja Squid is completely useless if you know this technique. There are some weapons that just really do well with Ninja Squid, such as Carbon Roller or any weapon that can shark really well. So make that judgment for yourself if you want Ninja Squid, but for the most part, I think you can use Stealth Swim in replacement of that. Just make that determination for yourself and your playstyle. In Splatoon 3, they introduced a mechanic known as Squid Roll. A Squid Roll can be performed while swimming through ink at top speed by pressing B, while simultaneously flicking the L stick in a different direction. A lot of people use this technique to simply move around the map, but what some people may not know or may not remember from the Splatoon 3 Direct is that there's a chance to parry an attack if performed at the right time. You will still receive damage, but parrying an attack can help you survive attacks that normally would be unsurvivable. For example, if a splat bomb is thrown at your feet and you're within the 180 damage, you can squid roll at the right time to parry and you could survive the attack. You can even parry specials. The window to perform this parry is a bit small, but I recommend knowing how to do this because during moments where you really need to stay alive, this move can come in clutch. I recommend going to the training room, turning on the copying machine, throw splat bombs at yourself, and just practice parrying at the right time. For number five, we have a technique, and I'll say technique because I actually think this is a technique known as sub strafing. Now, sub strafing is different from squid roll because this is not something the game actively teaches you. This is actually a technique invented by the community to help with movement. Sub strafing is a technique used in the competitive scene to change directions fast when swimming in ink. Pressing R when swimming will stop the deceleration of slowing down the swim speed and will cause the player to emerge out of their ink. The reason this technique is helpful is because it improves movement options when trying to navigate the map and engage in fights if you're in a 1v1 for example. There's been countless times I'm using sub strafing while fighting somebody. Some people have asked if it's worth using this technique now that squid roll exists, but the benefit of sub strafing is that it requires less frames and less momentum to happen. Just look at the difference between using sub strafing versus changing your direction without the R button. Now let's compare it to sub strafing and squid rolling. Each have their benefits, and I honestly think if you have the options to do both, then use both, don't just choose one or the other. I'm always using this technique during a match, and it may take some time to get used to. When I was learning it in Splatoon 2, I would sometimes throw the sub accidentally. The way I learned this technique was by doing it in Salmon Run. Since it's always so chaotic, it's a perfect environment to practice. With that, those are the top 5 techniques I think you should incorporate in your gameplay. I'm pretty sure I've missed a great few such as ledge canceling or right side peeking for chargers. And no Patrick, squid search is not an interesting technique. If you want to hear my opinions on squid search, I made a whole video on it, so check it out. This is the end of part one, but keep an eye out for a future video on the thought process of improving in competitive Splatoon featuring Apple. Until next time.